Welcome to two projects. In this video, we are going to explain the project Anomaly Detection in Blockchain Using Machine Learning. Before diving into the execution, let me give you an overview of the project. So Anomaly Detection in Blockchain is very important for finding unusual transaction patterns that suggest fraud or security issues. Even though blockchain is decentralized, it can still have vulnerabilities that affect its integrity. Detecting these anomalies helps keep blockchain systems secure, trustworthy, and efficient. But traditional methods of doing this like rule-based systems, statistical methods, and manual inspections have limitations. They struggle with large data volumes, can't adapt to new fraud patterns, and often produce many false positives. So this project proposes to use machine learning models, linear regression, Nibase, and XGBoost to detect anomalies more effectively. These models handle complex patterns and large data sets better than traditional methods. So the workflow involves importing transaction data, cleaning it, and using SMO to address class imbalances, splitting the data set into train and validation sets, Train set is for training the models and validation set is for evaluating the model's performance. So we will be training linear regression, Nibase and XGBoost in this project. And we'll evaluate their performance using different performance metrics like accuracy, precision, recall and F1 score to select the best performing model for anomaly detection. So this is what happens in this project. The project's beneficiaries include financial institutions, regulatory bodies, blockchain networks, and users by improving fraud detection and security. The overall goal is to develop a robust adaptive system using machine learning to identify and prevent fraudulent activities in blockchain networks. So this is the overview. Now we'll look at the software and hardware requirements to execute this project. Hardware requirements are operating system of Windows, processor of i5 and above, RAM of 8 GB and above, and hard disk of 25 GB and above. Software requirements are application needed is Anaconda. Primary language required is Python. Front-end framework needed is Flask. Back-end framework needed is Jupyter Notebook. Database required is SQL Lite 3 and front-end technologies required are HTML, CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap 4. Now we we'll look at the algorithms used. So in this project, we have trained linear regression, Nibase and XGBoost as I mentioned earlier. So we have trained these models and we have evaluated their performances using different performance metrics like accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. And we have observed that XGBoost algorithm has outperformed the other two algorithms in all the performance metrics. So we have deployed XGBoost into the Flask framework. We will be executing the project using Flask web application. Before execution, first we need to open the code folder, which contains the project source code files. So this is the code folder and these are the contents I have in the code folder. This is dataset folder in which I have required data set. So this data set comprises transaction related fields such as transaction hash, in degree, out degree, in bitcoins, out bitcoins, total bitcoins, etc. So these parameters detail transaction volumes, bitcoin amounts and malicious indicators facilitating anomaly detection in blockchain transactions using machine learning techniques. So we will be training the machine learning models on this data set. This is static folder, which consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap. This is templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc which represent different pages of the website. This is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to front-end logic. It includes code and Python that handles server-side operations, 
such as processing user requests, interacting with the database, and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML templates. This is model file which contains algorithm information. This file will be loaded into the project code during runtime to utilize the trained model. This is notebook Jupyter source file which contains a combination of code, graphs, and outputs all in one place. So Jupyter Notebook allows users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for data science. This is test cases text document in which I have test cases, which will be used during the execution. And this is signup.db file. This file is the database file used to store user information. So it stores information like user signup details. This is about the code folder. Now copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer. This is the path. I'm copying it. Open Anaconda prompt. Use the command CD followed by a space and paste the copied path and hit the enter button. So this command is used to change the current directory to the code folders path. Now compile the app.py file. Using the command python space app.py, I'm typing python space app.py and hit the enter button. So this command executes the python script and performs a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address local host and port unless configured differently. Now copy the local link provided by the Flask framework. I'm copying it and paste it into any web browser. I usually prefer Chrome. So I'm pasting it here and hit the enter button. So the home page of the project has been displayed in the browser. This is the front end built using Flask framework. And here we can see a sign up link. Click on it. So if you are new users, we have to register ourselves first, fill in all these details and click on register button to sign up. And if we already have an account, we can directly log in by clicking on the sign in link. So as I'm already a member, I'm clicking on this link. Here we have to give our credentials, username and password. I'm giving mine. And click on login button. So it has redirected us to the anomaly detection page. So now we have to fill in these parameters and click on the submit button to get the detection whether it is anomaly or normal. First, we'll understand these parameters. The first one is in degree. So in degree is the number of incoming transactions to an address. Out degree is the number of outgoing transactions from an address. Bitcoin in is the total Bitcoin received by an address. Bitcoin out is the total Bitcoin sent out from an address. Total Bitcoin is the net amount of Bitcoin at an address calculated as received minus sent. Mean in Bitcoin is the average Bitcoin received per transaction and mean out Bitcoin is average Bitcoin sent per transaction. So this is about the parameters. Now we'll fill in these parameters. So in degree would be one out degree is two. Bitcoin in would be 25,000. Bitcoin out would be 25,000. Total Bitcoin is 50,000. Mean in Bitcoin would be 25,000. And mean out Bitcoin would be 12,500. Now click on submit button. So here we can see the result, the detection that is anomaly transaction detected. So according to the given set of parameters, the application has detected anomaly transaction. So anomaly transaction is unusual transaction, which could be a fraud transaction. Click on try again. We'll try giving another set of parameters. This time in degree would be zero. Out degree is one. Bitcoin in is zero. Bitcoin out would be 50. Total Bitcoin is 50. 
mean in bitcoin would be 0 and mean out bitcoin would be 50. After giving these parameters, click on submit button. So here we can see the result that is safe transaction. So according to the given set of parameters, the application has predicted that it is a safe transaction. It is not an anomaly. We'll try giving another set of parameters. This time in degree would be zero. Out degree is one. Bitcoin in would be 50. Bitcoin out is zero. Total Bitcoin is 25. Mean in Bitcoin would be zero and mean out Bitcoin is 50. Click on the submit button. So here we can see the result that it is a safe transaction again. So the application has predicted that it is a safe transaction. It is not an anomaly. We'll try with another set of parameters one last time. In degree would be 83. Out degree is 2. Bitcoin in is 1720.151. Bitcoin out is 1720.011. Total Bitcoin would be 3440.162. Mean in Bitcoin is 20.72. And mean out Bitcoin would be 860.0. Now click on the submit button after giving the parameters. So here we can see the outcome that is anomaly transaction detected. So according to the given set of parameters, the application has predicted it as anomaly transaction. That means it is an unusual transaction. It could be a fraudulent one. So in this way, we have to give the parameters. Click on the submit button to get the detection whether it is anomaly or a safe transaction. Now click on the logout button. So this project aim to enhance blockchain security by using machine learning models to detect anomalies in transactions. By analyzing transaction patterns and identifying irregularities, the system improved fraud detection and network integrity, offering significant benefits to financial institutions, regulatory bodies, blockchain networks, and end users. Thank you for watching video. For more projects, please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.